Thank you for remaining standing. Uh, speaking of revival, who we are so blessed and so privileged and so honored to have grace this platform today is a true revivalist. Uh, Pastor David Crank and my, well, they're all my friends, but my favorite, Pastor Nicole Crank and, and Ashton Squared and Austin Squared and Morgan from St. Louis to West Palm Beach and campuses all over the world, uh, Faith Church is truly spreading not just the event of revival, but the spirit of revival throughout this country and the world. And Pastor David Crank, he actually contacted us and he said, I have a word that I feel like is specifically for your church, for our online family, for our campuses, all of our City Harvest Network campuses and there in Elkhart, would you give me a Sunday? And he's leaving like 27 churches and 42 million D uh, services to come and to deliver this word today. And we are ready to receive it, amen? Would you welcome the revivalist, Pastor David Crank. Thank you, Ashton. Love you. Come on. Come on, give it up for the Parsleys. Won't you do it big? Come on, you can do better than that. Oh, Lord Jesus, I love this church. Look at your neighbor and tell him, say, you got blessed you got to sit by me today. You really did. I just want to start out by letting you guys know, you can be seated, that I am a Rod Parsley fan, fanatic, nuts about Rod Parsley. I'm crazy about America's camp meeting that happens right here in the middle of a cornfield. Come on, somebody ought to give God praise today. I'm telling you, Rod Parsley was my hero growing up, still is. Uh, I used to sit at home when I was a little kid, and I, I didn't watch football or sports. My dad was anti-sports. I played football in, in high school. I played tailback. Uh, the coach said, get your tail back on the bench and sit down. <laughs> But what my hobby was is I watched preachers. And I remember as a little boy watching your pastor come up here and he had this bridge. Anybody remember the bridge? Any veterans in here? Come on. I know the Indiana campus is going to realize this. And, and then one day I remember he got like he was a holiness preacher, right? And so he's in a tent. And I turned it on and he's coming out of a tent with a cigarette in his hand. Come on, somebody ought to help me right now. It was so creative. Like he was innovative before Ed Young, before anybody. I mean, he created creativity with the power and the just the power of the Holy Ghost. And then I would watch it every single week. So again, I'm grateful for the man, the myth, the legend, Rod Parsley, Ellen Parsley. Come on, Ashton Parsley, Austin, Joni Parsley. I think the whole church ought to stand up and give honor where honor is due in this house. Come on, give him good praise today. We honor him. We make a miracle worker, promise keeper, Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Even when I can't see it, even when I can't see it, you're working. Even when I can't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Look at your neighbor and say, you sing good. You should be in the choir. Uh-huh. Waymaker. I am excited about today. You can be seated if you're good looking. If you're ugly, remain standing. We want to pray for you right now. I am excited about today. Before I do get into today's word, though, I'm on Instagram, and I don't want you to, my church doesn't know where I'm at today, so I want you to make a bunch of noise as if I did a good job on Instagram. On the count of three, I want you to clap and scream like, oh my gosh, this guy's a legend. He is killing it in Ohio. It's just all fake, but let's do it. Ready? One, two, three. Come on, we're a world harvest church blowing it up. Yeah! Come on, somebody. Super Bowl Sunday. I got you. It's going to take a while because I have to tag everybody in the shot. No. Thank you. And what about the band? Unbelievable, right? That guy there. That guy right there, he was like singing. He's like. Yeah. All right. Um, you know, I'm not that good of a preacher, so I bring a lot of props with me. But I do have a word today for you. Some of you have been chained up with debt. I mean, just totally chained up with debt. By the way, debt means doing everything but thinking. Look at your neighbor and say, I know that's right. 
It also means doing everything but tithing. So many times, as soon as we get 18, all of a sudden they send us a credit card. Remember that when you got a credit card in the mail? You're like, man, this is going to be good. And then all of a sudden you got the bill. And you're like, somebody stole my credit card. Anybody ever done that? Somebody stole my credit card. And then upon further investigation, you had went to Starbucks 97 times. You had went to the movies and bought the popcorn. Which, by the way, you go to the movies, it's $1,900 to go to the movies these days, right? $27 for a soda, $42 for... It's just crazy. But we start finding ourselves bound by the enemy, chained up, trying to walk around. But we, we come into church, and we're like, oh, yeah, I love you, Lord. I love to give you money. I love to be blessed, but I'm broke. We broke is the Ten Commandments when Moses brought them down off the mountain. He's broke. And I grew up poor, super poor. But my dad got some information in Revelation that set us free. And I'm here today to tell you that I did call your pastor because God told me this is not just a sermon. This is a word. I got a 20,000 member church. I don't know, six campuses that I got to preach at. I'm not looking for a place to preach. But I did call him because God gave me a word about the first Sunday of February for this church. The first, the first, the first. There's something special about the first. Come on, shout it. The first. Y'all remember your first kiss? Come on, somebody ought to help me right now. Some of y'all were like, I don't remember, but I'll tell you what. I seem like I recall. First, there's something special about the first time you ever walked into church. Something special about the first time you ever actually heard from God. There's something special about the first. God so loved the world that he sent his first son, Jesus, the first begotten of the Father, for you and I not to live in debt, not to be chained up, to, but to be free. And here's what he said to me about 2020. Number one, prophetically, I operate in the prophetic, but also sometimes in the pathetic. Come on, somebody want to help me a little bit. But prophetically, all joking aside, God told me, and he said 2020 was a significant year for his people. That in 2020, just like with 2020 vision, we would see the prayers manifest in our life that we've been looking for for a long time. That we would see the harvest that we've been sowing for. That not everybody's going to get this, but somebody's going to get it today on the first Sunday of the best year of February you ever had in your life. Who's going with me on this today? Something about the first. Everybody shout the first. So God wants to get this word on the inside of you about the first. Now, so many times the Bible says that my people are perished and destroyed for a lack of knowledge. It's what you don't know that's killing you. Now, certain things we do know, we just don't do. How many of y'all know how to have six-pack abs? Raise your hand. You've seen the infomercials. Raise your hand right now. But people are like, oh, yo, don't eat before bed. I agree. Eat in bed. Can I get an amen on that right now? I know how to have six-pack abs, but the problem is I like to eat. Can I get a witness? So it's that we know what to do, we just don't want to do it. Well, it would be the same in the church world. Many of you watching online today, you know what to do, you're just not doing it. So today what I want to do is help you get your life in order in the area of finances because God said this in his word, that the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. I believe that this is going to be a decade of a wealth transference in from the kingdom of darkness over into the kingdom of life. This is Super Bowl Sunday today and I know who's going to win. Come on world harvest it's you you are a winner because jesus didn't go to hell die take the keys to death the hell and the grave to come back for you to be broke i prophesy that you'll never be broke another day in your life that god's about to turn it around for your good you're going to be the one living in the right neighborhood living in the right house. who am i talking to today i'm sick and tired of you being sick and tired the last thing you need with all the problems in the world is money problems look at your neighbor and say he's talking to you right now Money problems, money problems. Now, there's something about the first that's very, very important. Yeah, first fruits. There was a tree in the middle of the garden. Remember this? There's a guy by the name of Adam and a girl by the name of Eve, and they lived in this beautiful garden. It was absolutely beautiful. Um, they had no bills, no tax bill, no, no kids. Uh, she, he had six-pack abs. When he did this in the morning, it was like... <laughs> She was gorgeous. They were gorgeous. No kids, just love was in the air. People don't act like they've never had relationships up in this church. Who am I talking to that filled the nursery? I saw all these kids up in here. They were enjoying their life. And then the enemy came in. You got to watch it. The enemy will come right into your relationship. He'll come right into your life. And he starts talking. Anybody ever had the devil talking to you? Oh, yeah. I told my wife one time, we're going to get out of debt. 
She went to the mall, just mall walking. She's like, I'm not going to buy anything. Then she saw a dress, and the dress talked to her. She put on the dress. She came back with the dress. I said, I thought we agreed that when you put on the dress and the devil tempted you to do that, you would rebuke Satan. She said, I said, get behind me, Satan. And he said, it looks good back there too, girl. It looks good back there too. But the devil talks. Come on, somebody ought to help me right The devil talks. Anybody ever heard of the devil talking? The devil talks. So the devil comes in the cool of the evening. Now picture this as a tree in the middle of the garden. So now there's this beautiful tree in the midst of the garden, in the middle of the garden, and God said, all of those trees you can eat, and all of those trees you can eat, and all of those trees you can eat, but don't touch the first tree because the first tree belongs to me. The first, the first, everybody shout the first. The first tree belongs to me, and he said, if you touch it, you will surely die. Not instantaneous physical death, but some of you have died financially. I'm talking about you're not dreaming anymore about owning your own home, the American dream. You're not dreaming about paying off the house anymore. You're not dreaming about going and doing medical missionary work around the world because you've done the math on your miracle. And I'm telling you, you can't do the math on your miracle. When you put God first, you'll never come in last. I'm telling you, he will bless you coming in and he will bless you. I'm not talking to everybody. I'm just one of about 10 people to say 2020 is the year that I'm going to get back everything the devil has stolen for me. God's about to put his super on my natural and I'll never be broke another day of my life. Give him praise. I'll give you 10 seconds to praise him. First fruit, first fruit, first fruit. There's something about the first. So said, Don't you touch that tree. That's where MC Hammer got that song. Can't touch this. Look at your neighbor and say, can't touch this. 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 10. Tithe means 10th. If you can count to 10, you can count to a million and 10. It's always about the 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Start over again. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 10 again. 10, 10, 10. The first 10 belongs to God. Not because God's trying to get something from you, but he's trying to get something to you. And he's got to make sure you have the right relationship with the money because he knows good and well, if you get money, you do stupid stuff with it if you're in the flesh. Look at your neighbor and say, he's talking to you. I can tell by those tennis shoes you got on right now. The world does stupid stuff. I fly to Miami today. I have a beautiful home there and church there. I love it there. In the wintertime, God seems to lead me to stay there a lot in January. But a few miles down from the Super Bowl is the Super Bowl tonight. And they're telling me that these tickets, just regular tickets, cost like $6,500. I don't know how much your ticket was today to get in World Harvest, but I think it was cheaper. In fact, I think they paid you to come in. They were giving you all this stuff. I'm like, man, I need to switch churches. Back in the day, we didn't have to pay people to go to church. Come on, somebody just said, I was glad when they said it to me. But sports sometimes, and I love sports. Don't get me wrong. Man, I'm on a sicker cow here. I love it that you love sports, but I got to make sure that sports has its place. But sometimes we put sports above God. Sunday is God's day. It's always been God's day. It will be God's day. It's the first day. Somebody else shout the first. I know you ain't liking this, but if you're going to take the money, you got to take the rules. Come on, somebody. I told my daughter, she's 16. I said, as long as you live in my house. Anybody heard of this speech? God's saying, as long as you live in my house and you want the blessing that comes from me, then the first is always the first and it's never the second. And you can never come in third or fourth if you put God first. The first, the first, the first. It's the first day. This is a significant day. So they're paying $6,500 for a ticket. Some of my friends, you know, they're talking about there's these rooms that they go in and there's special rooms there. And they're paying a million dollars for this small room, a million dollars, a hundred thousand dollars at these seats here. And you get close to J-Lo or whoever it is up in there. That's stupid. I'm going to try it for these people over here. I said, that's stupid. That's stupid. I don't care how much money you got. You got Michael Jackson giraffe money. That's stupid. Because the world doesn't know how to deal with money. They have the money, but they don't know what to do with it. How about we waste it on bottles? I saw it on E! Entertainment last night, and they said, well, it's $150,000. I said, what do you get? They said, we got loads of champagne. I said, well, they're going to need it because they need to be drunk if they're that stupid to spend that much money on this room. I'm here to tell you today that I prophesy that God is getting ready to take from the people that do not know what to do with the money, and he's about to deposit over into some people that somebody ought to shout amen. I know what to do with money. We're going to build a church. We're going to do medical missions. We're going to help the homeless. We're going to rescue girls out of sex trafficking. Who am I talking to today? That's what we do with the money. The money's in the hands of the wrong people. Now, I know it's going to sound weird, but I want you to say, I want my daddy's money back. Shout it again. I want my daddy's money back. I want my daddy's money back. 
and I want it now. See, it's, it's, you're claiming it. I believe you have not because you ask not. I believe that you need to say it, spray it, wheel it, deal it, make them feel it. Ashton Parsley, boy, she's a cheerleader. Come on, can you believe that girl today? First, first. There, there was a guy in the Bible by the name of Cain and another dude by the name of Abel. And if you remember, it says in the course of time that one brother, Abel, he brought the first fruits. And the Lord was pleased with him because it was the first, first, first. It said that Cain, over here was raising Cain. Cain said, I brought all kinds of stuff to God. I brought him some stuff on the 15th and some stuff on the 14th. And I brought him some stuff on the 3rd and I brought all this stuff. No, the blessing exchange happens when you're obedient to the precise, accurate statements of God. And he said on the first day of the week that we bring the first fruits to the house of God. It said that this one joker, Cain, the difference between Cain and Abel is he brought all kinds of different stuff on, on different days. But God said, no, this dude brought the first, the first. Everybody shout the first. He brought the first on the right day. This guy with the, would you mind coming up here? You look so good in this suit. Yeah, come here. I want you to help me with something real quick. I love your look. You can tell by the way I use my walk. I'm a woman's man. No time to talk. That dude's sharp. Now, I, I got this right here, and I, I want you to help me with this. This is a uh, safe. This, this is a, come over here for people to see. This is a bike lock. This is the code for that. Um, now, this random code, you're going to have to guess what numbers they are, but it's 8070, but put something in there and see what you got. You get one shot at this because we're in a hurry. Okay, now, yep, yeah, bye-bye. See you later, alligator. <laughs> Smart guy. Got the number. I want one other, maybe the worship leader with the, with the nice-looking striped shirt. Come here, you singing bird, because you could probably just sing, and this thing will melt in your hand. That's the, that's the code. Okay. You, you just got to figure out the code. These are the right numbers. Here's the thing a lot of times people do. They have the right numbers. Mm -hmm. They just don't have them in proper sequence. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Give it up for the great singer. He's a good singer, but he's just not led by the Holy Ghost when it comes to <laughs> this thing right here. Come on, give it up for the, the man, the myth, the message. I think I can do it. Mm, see, so many times you come to church and you give God the tithe but you do not give God the tithe in sequence. So they had the right number. Whoa. Both of them had the same opportunity I did, but I knew the sequence. Right. Here's the reason why I came today. Some of you are tithers. Raise your hand if you're a tither. Yeah. I know you are. You're a tither. But some of you are not receiving the benefits because your sequence is out of order. In other words, it's still locked up. What is going on in the world is affecting you because you're not having it in sequential order. You say, what does that mean? God just gets offended because he's God. And if you go and you pay the electric bill before you return the tithe, then God goes, you got to be kidding me. I blessed you with a blessing and you're touching the first fruit that comes out. You're paying the car payment when you know that you're supposed to bring the first. This is the Cain and Abel issue right here. They both gave a lot of stuff, but it's not about how much you give. It's did you do it on the day and did you do it first? It's called first fruit because it's supposed to be first. But a lot of times we think, well, I'm going to give later. I'm going to give after I pay these bills or I'm going to tithe after I'm done. That's the problem. You look and you don't have enough left over because you did not do the first thing first. I'm saying go back and do your first works over and allow God to unlock your preferred future. Supernatural debt cancellation is coming to some people. Houses, lands you did not own. I'm saying today on the way home, somebody ought to take the long way home and drive through the neighborhood and say, I wonder which house is going to be mine. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah. I'm sick and tired of God's people driving junk cars, not having enough money, putting stuff back, putting it on their credit card. I'm here to prophesy today. If you get it right, I gave him the number. 
He's smart. He's sweet. He can sing, but he couldn't unlock it. This joker here looks like he's straight out of a model catalog, but he could not open it because he had the number, but he didn't have it in sequential order. I'm saying here on the first day of February is the first day for the rest of your life to understand. I know now how to unlock the code. Somebody ought to give God praise to my financial freedom. Shout it again. First, 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 first. So the first fruit belongs to God. This safe over here, this safe, I know the code. I opened it. I told him to have gold bars in there. What in the world happened? I brought this up today and I said, I want a code on safe because I want you to remember this. Locked up behind here, if you knew the code and you don't know the code, only I know the code because I told the code and then sometimes I don't like to tell you the code because it's actually the code that I can remember which is the real code to my safe and I don't want you there because there really is gold in that one. Locked up inside of your future is the house you're dreaming of, the business you, I need to know somebody that would give me a loan. I need to know somebody that would co-sign. I'm telling you what, God can do for you in one minute what it would take a lifetime for you to do if you could just get the first fruit right. But so many of you are locked right now, locked up, chained up, tied up to all the problems because I know what it's like to, to go to be broke. Some of you walking like this. I owe, I owe, I owe, so off the work I go. Coming to church. I gotta figure out how to pay my bills, I tell you. No, God said in Philippians 4.19, my God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I've never seen the righteous forsaken or a seed out begging for bread. Psalms 35.27, let them shout for joy and be glad who favor my righteous cause. Let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified who takes pleasure in the prosperity of his people. If you want to bring God glory, our kids should not walk into school with student loans. Our kids should say, I'm blessed and my bills are already paid. Come on, somebody. I'll take a grant, but I got a heavenly grant. Somebody to give him praise because we're not going with the world system we're going with the word system world or word world or word you need to be word ruled and i know you get you hear good teaching but it's not the truth that you hear that sets you free it's the truth that you do that's why the bible said be doers of the word and not hearers only the christians can sit down with the sinners Now listen here, so many times, it's just one click away. You're just one sequential order off. I'm a pilot, and uh, you can be four degrees off on a GPS and land at the wrong airport. And it's not a big deal till it's a big deal. When you're landing on an ILS, it's an instrument landing sl- slope, and you're on the glide slope, and there's, there's buildings in the fog, and you don't see them, how many of y'all know you need to see? But if you can't see, you better go with the numbers. What's the numbers say? And then you fly blind, but not really. You're flying by the code. You're you're flying by the GPS. And then you will land. And all of a sudden, now I come down through the clouds, which, by the way, it was awesome today. I heard on the weather today here that they said it had been 10 days since the sun shined. I'm just here to tell you, I'm from Florida, and I brought that with me. You're welcome. (laughs) Ain't no sunshine when he's gone. Now, I want you to get a hold of this on the inside of your spirit. Yeah. It's not more teaching that you need. Right. You just need to go back to the stuff we know. Right. What does it say in the Word? The Word right. says, bring the first fruit, yeah. not the second, not the third, the first. Some of you are driving stolen cars. Yeah. Some of you in here have stolen tennis shoes. Some of you are going to watch the game today on a stolen TV. <laughs> Got a word of knowledge about that right up in here. Come on, somebody out of heaven. So when you take the tithe and you went and bought what you wanted, you added your own prosperity, which really wasn't prosperity at all. It was a curse. That's exactly what happened to a guy named Achan. And he brought the stuff into the tent that was God's stuff. God said, he said, Matthew 6, 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things, ings, would be added unto you. Bling, bling, cha-ching, cha-ching, ings, unto you. But the problem is we've been trying to add it to ourself. You've been fronting prosperity with a credit card 
doing everything but thinking. And now you didn't honor God. And God is saying, listen, if you honor me, I will honor you. So he said, now test me. So today, the first day of February is a test day. So let's go here. Malachi 3, verse 8. It says, begin by being honest. This is the Message Bible. Look at your neighbor and say, that would help you a lot right there. Do honest people rob God? But you have robbed me day after day. And you ask, how have we robbed you? He said, the tithe and the offering. Notice there's two different things here. The tithe and the offering. That's how. And now you're under a curse. The whole lot of you, because you're robbing me. Bring the full tithe to the temple, treasury, so there will be ample provisions in my temple. Test me and see if I do not open up heaven itself and pour you out the wildest blessings beyond your wildest dreams. He said, listen, this is the word, the first day of February, that's going to change your life forever. The thing that's going to unlock the safe to actually allow God to bring the miracle manifestation of money, the loan, the debt cancellation. You're thinking it's more education you need. And really, it's nice to be educated. But I'm telling you anymore, it's not about a college degree. It's about information and power in the world that we live right now. And God is about to do it in this church this Sunday for people who say, I do know the code. Come on, somebody. I will crack the code. I'm going to get the sequential order right. And I'm never going to be broke another day of my life. And you can tell the devil, I'm blessed. I'm favored. Everything my hand touches turns to good. I'm blessed coming in. I'm blessed going out. And no weapon formed against me will prosper. I don't care what happens in the economy. My God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. You can go through the worst recession and know I'm a kingdom woman. I'm a kingdom man. I'm blood bought, scripture taught, and I am a first fruiter. Look at your neighbor and say, he's preaching today. So, so, so test me, test me, test me. Everybody shout, test me. I like to read it out of the, another version. He says, will a rat man rob me? He said, yes, you have robbed me. How did you rob me? In tithes and offering, you're under a curse. And the whole nation is under a curse because you're robbing me. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord, and see if I will not open up the floodgates of heaven and pour you out far more than enough. But it's got to happen on the first. It has to happen with the first, 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 first. Now, 80% of the church does not tithe. 80%. 80%. So only 20% of the people in here today paid for the big Super Bowl kit that kind of conned people into coming to church. Come to church, we'll give you. And I think it's sweet, it's cute, but I just kind of, I want us to get away from that. I think mature believers come to church because they love God. They prioritize God. And they say, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Now, we will watch somebody throw a football later today, and we will enjoy some dip and some chips. Come on, somebody, and some soda. But the first thing we're going to do is bless the Lord at the house. Come on. We're, not, we're, we're in the house. This is the, think about where God brought you from. Think about how you would be dead. Think about all those times you asked God to help you, and he helped you. But you said, today I can't go because I got to go to Kroger to get all my stuff together. That just makes God mad. I don't like you. I'm sorry. sorry. I love you. But I want you to never, ever be broke another day in your life. And you have to get an alignment for the assignment because these are the last days in which we're living in. And God is looking to and fro to see who can I bless? Who can I give the code to that I could unlock supernatural debt cancellation? Who can I actually give a million dollar idea to? Who can actually be the one who that I can trust in the church? You say, God, bless me. God, bless me. And God's like, bless me. God bless America. God's up there saying, America, bless God. You can be seated. That's like the guy looking at a fireplace going, give me heat, give me heat, give me heat. Fireplace say, give me wood, give me wood, give me wood. Give me heat, give me heat, give me, give me heat first and I'll give you wood. No. We go out here to this cornfield. There's a lot of corn out here, man. Farmer on one side of the street could have 1,900 acres and have full, beautiful corn growing. Same guy on the other side, God, what'd you do? He's got 1,900 acres and I've got 1,900 acres. We're only one road apart. It's a two-lane road. It's not even that big a difference. And he said, he gave me seed. I gave him harvest. You just complain and remain. 
he's praising and raising, doing what I told him to do, because the Bible operates like this. He operates on a system of seed, time, and harvest. Shout it with me. Seed, time, and harvest. Shout it again. Seed, time, and harvest. Seed, time, and harvest. So there's a seed that's above, beyond tithe, then there's the offering. Now, when I first, I got divorced when I was, uh, I got married when I was 18, back when I knew everything. I should have hired myself. I fell in love. It was puppy love that leads to a dog's life. Come on, somebody oh, on But we, she didn't know what she wanted to be. And when I got married, married for eight years, she came to me and said, I want a divorce. I don't want to be married to a preacher. It's not what I wanted. Man, I was just hurt and so bad, devastated. And then the worst thing you can do is listen to the radio at times like that, right? right. I'm all out of love. I'm so lost without you. <laughs> Turn the station. Baby, come back. You can blame it all on me. I was wrong. Next station. At first I was afraid, I was petrified, kept thinking I can never live without you by my side. And then I spent so many nights just thinking, how you done me wrong, and I grew strong, and I learned how to get along. And then I started going, I'm going to lose weight. I'm going to drink water. I'm going to get in the game again. And so I just started not complaining about where I was and crying about what didn't happen. I decided to take charge of my life. And so I went out and started giving my phone number to every girl that had two legs. Come on, somebody. Phone number, phone number, phone number, phone number, phone number. How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? And then I had to take her. Her name is Nicole Craig. And she came to me and she had a little boy who was eight years old. And I thought, this is good because I always wanted a kid and never had a kid. But actually, now I never have to change a diaper. I don't go through the terrible twos. He's old enough to take out the trash. I'm telling you, God took me right from one level to the next level and brought me a son. He's seven years old. He's got his big people teeth, his little people teeth. And he said, can I call you Papa? I said, call me what you want to call me. Your mama called me Big Daddy. Just call me, son. Yeah, watch this. She comes, she comes over. She comes to my house. And my wife, here's the first thing she tells me the week before we got married. She said, I want to talk about money. I thought, oh, man, God love her. She's got a you know, single mom, put herself through college. She's got loads of student loans, I'm sure. But she's hot. I'll just pay what I got to pay. We'll get out of this. <laughs> she said, no, I don't have no debt. She said, I need to talk to you because I'm a tither. And it's a non-negotiable with me. And I'm like, my dad going to love you. My dad a pastor. Come on, somebody. He going to love you. And I said, well, how much money you make? She said, well, I've been living in the apartment because I never wanted anybody to marry me because of my money. So I've been kind of laying low about it. I'm like, I like what I'm here right now. Come on, I'm about to unlock the code. And so I said, how much money you make? She said, well, I make around $100,000 a month. A month. And I said, I do not believe in prenuptials. It's a sure way to mess up your life. I believe whatever is yours is mine, and whatever is mine is mine. Somebody ought to help me right now. $100,000 a month? What? Ah! Oh. See, I was living in a basement apartment because I had lost everything I owned. I don't know if you heard of the new divorce Barbie, but it comes with all Ken's stuff. I didn't have any money and I was broke, but God in one day, because I was a tither, hooked me up with another tither and God can do in one day what the devil used eight years of my life. I thought walked out the door and he said, I'm about to give you a double for your trouble. Somebody ought to get excited today. I got a son who's now 30, who is a pastor of our church in Florida and he's good looking. Looking, so that means he got a good looking wife, which means I'm about to have good looking grandbabies. Don't get jealous of me. Same code, same daddy, same DNA is on the inside of me that's on the inside of you. For God so loved the world that he gave his first. God exemplified. He said, Here's how it's done. Give your first, give your best. But if it's not the first, it's not the best. I'm going to shout it again. If it's not the first, it's not the best. So to unlock this safe, the, this harvest, uh, debt cancellation, the new house, the, the, the loan you wanted, or whatever it is that money can't buy for you, God is saying, here's the code. There it is. You just open it up. It works every time. We could do this until the battery died. 
nah, 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 nah. What do you do? You don't grow weary in well-doing. You will reap if you faint not. Faithful man shall abound in the blessing. So you need to go to work on Monday morning, and everybody won the Super Bowl, and that's great. I don't know who's winning. I hope the Chiefs win only because it's prophetic prophecy that a man said like 40 years ago. He said, we'll know when the end time revival hits when the Chiefs win the Super Bowl. I didn't know that until the other day when I was with Marcus Lamb and he showed me the video on Daystar. And then I got to thinking, I wonder if the Lord wants me to go to Vegas and bet on this game. I don't know. But that was the devil. Come on, somebody help me right now. All I'm telling you is I don't know, but we'll see at the end of the night. But whether they win or the other team wins, I know who's already won. You have already won the big one. Come on, somebody. You've won the Super Bowl that won't go just one year, and then the next year somebody else gets a ring. Everybody ought to start going, I'm practicing my victory dance. I'm practicing what's about to happen to me. I'm here to tell you, if you'll grab a hold of this, it'll take you from where you are to where God has called you to be. You are anointed to prosper. You are qualified to prosper. You are on purpose to prosper. Somebody ought to give him praise today. But you got to get the code right. Come on, Indiana. Come on, online. Get the code right. Everybody shout, get the code right. Exodus 23, verse 19. Exodus 23, 19. The first of the first fruits of the land thou shalt bring into the house of the Lord thy God. The second, the third, no, the first. Everybody shout it loud. The first of the first fruits of thy land thou shalt bring into the house. World Harvest Church is the house for you. Some of you watching online, this is your church. People are like, well, I kind of split the tithe. No, you don't. You bring it all to this house. If Rod Parsley's your pastor and you're eating here, why don't you go to Applebee's today and order yourself a whole mess of nachos and then get up and walk out and say, well, no, but I'm going to pay over at my friend's got a restaurant and they really need the money. They're not doing too good. So now you need to go over there and pay there. No, no, no. If you eat at Applebee's, the manager is going to say, I'm going to call the cops because you are a crook. You cannot eat in here and steal this and walk out of here. Go to your friend. The reason why your friend going broke because he can't make chicken wings. Come on, somebody ought to help me right now. So we can't take here when we're on World Harvest watching Pastor Rod Parsley and he's your pastor and this is where you get your food from. When you eat here, you pay here because there needs to be meat in this house because it took something to get the information to you. Come on, the word of God is free but the way we get it to you is not. Somebody, uh, the Bible said when you rob me, you've robbed the whole nation, right? How do we rob the nation? Rod Parsley has bought the television equipment. You guys have done it, 20% of you. The rest of you have not done it. But today, Today is the day, the first day, and the best day of the rest of your life so you can unlock your financial future and say, you know what, today's the day I'm going to go back and I'm going to get it right. Some of you need to get it right today. Well, I don't have the money today. Well, you got a credit card, you'd be using your credit card for everything else. Tickets to a game. Get your nails did. Get your weave on. Come on, somebody. Somebody said, weave my weave alone. Come on, that's unbelievable. Don't don't, don't be touching that. I'm just saying there's areas in your life in which you probably need to look and go, you know what? I have been stealing from God. And people can do what they need to do. They just got to decide that they want to do it bad enough. So today's the day that you can say, I'm going to go back and I'm going to get this right. Because if you want to unlock this code, you can. It's up to you. I want to show this brother here on the end. You've been here so long. Elder Canfield, Canfield, come here. I want to let you be the winner because you're just smart. He's a winner. Winners do what they want. I've been seeing this man on television since I was two. Okay, the code. The code is this. I'll even give it to you. Look, real clear. 0708. I don't know why these other ding bets couldn't figure this out. I tell you right now, it's just unbelievable. Look at that. Apparently, it works for anybody. Come on, somebody. It works for anybody. Come on, somebody. Zero, it's just easy. 0708. Now, I have, they have the numbers, but they had, they were all messed up. 8070. One guy tried 777. I'm like, yeah, it's a lucky number. Okay, whatever. But the, the fact is, Elder Canfield knew it's 0708. He, they had all the right numbers. Their sequence was out. 
And God sent me up here to tell you that a lot of you have not experienced the blessing. The 20% of you that are tithing, you haven't experienced the full measure of the blessing because your sequential order is right. You got to get, the horse has got to be out in front of the cart. You can't put the horse behind the cart. You got to get it right. And when the alignment is right, boom, anybody can work it. Give it up for the bishop right there. Now here's what I want to do in our last couple minutes. In our last couple minutes, I want you to just focus here for one minute. Theft is theft, period. Heard about an old lady that she went to court. Her husband was in court. She's about 80 years old. And she had gotten arrested for stealing a can of peaches. And she was in there and the judge looked at her and he said, okay. How many peaches were in that can? She said, there were 12. She says, okay, you get one day in jail for every peach you stole. And the old man said, she stole a can of peas too. <laughs> How many of y'all know that husband was ready to get rid of? Some of you look confused. There's a lot of peas in it. But, <laughs> but I'm here to tell you that stealing is wrong. Some of you'd never steal from Walmart because you'd be afraid they'd see you. You'd never steal from Target. You know, sometimes what's the difference between Target and Walmart? It just depends how bougie you want to be that day, right? So you walk in. I walk into, I walk into Walmart. I'm a 10. I'm here to tell you right now that God wants to do something big in your life. But it's really up to you. I'm a single mom. So is my wife. Till I met her. And then a woman make that kind of money. You don't let a woman like that slip through your hands. Come on, somebody ought to help me right now. God, um, she was praying. She was like, oh, God, send me a man. I need a man, God. Send me a man of God. And I came in. She said, I'm looking for Boaz. She said, I done met dumb ass, stupid ass, broke ass, but I, I need Boaz. Somebody ought to help me right now. I'm here to tell you that single moms are about to meet a man this year in 2020. You're about to see your Boaz come in to your life. God can do for you what he did for me. He can do it in a day. He's done with you raising that kid by yourself, bringing him to church, trying to be the man and the woman. I'm here to tell you today is the first day of February. It is Super Bowl Sunday and World Harvest Church. Who's going with me on this? You're a winner. You're a winner. You're a winner. Stand up with me. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light of the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Come on, sing it now. Waymaker, waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Even when I can't see it. Come on, sing it now. Oh, yeah. Even when I can't see it, you're working. Even when I can't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I can't see it, you're working. Even when I can't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Every head bowed and every eye closed, I just feel the Holy Spirit speaking to me right now about people that you've been going through tremendous financial peril. I mean, you feel the weight of it. You're tossing and turning in the middle of the night. You're literally worried, sick about it. I want you to raise your hands here and even online at home. God sees you. Raise your hand high if you're under tremendous financial pressure. You can put it down. Now, I want everybody to look at me just for a moment. How many would, would say, I'm not under extreme financial pressure, but I do know that I'm not nearly living the life that I know I'm supposed to? Raise your hand. If you know, I'm, just not, I'm not supposed to live here. I'm not supposed to have debt. The Bible said to owe no man nothing but to love him. God said, I'm able to do exceedingly and abundantly and above all you can. He didn't say he would. He said, I'm able. I'm able to buy my daughter a new Corvette today, but I'm not willing. But I'm able. She's 16. She's not ready for it. God is looking at you online and here. 
I'm talking to somebody and you're like, man, this word from Pastor David was for me today. I do know now I know what it is. My tithe, I'm not tithing. It's the first fruit. And this is something that you, God said, test me. See, just test it. You don't have to do it the rest of your life. Just see if God's lying to you. We trust airline pilots more than we trust God. Yeah. Never met the guy and get on a plane. He's up in the front, never talked to him, never interview him. Could be complete drunken alcoholic. And you sit back there going, yeah, I'm just trusting I'm a pilot, and I, I fly with a lot of people, and a lot of these pilots run around the world. They never see their family, and they're addicted to drugs and alcohol because they're never home. It's the worst. It's a, you're, you ought to be scared every time you get on one unless you get on your tither and go, I hijacked this plane in the name of Jesus. We're going to the other side with that accident or incident in the name of the Lord Jesus. Somebody ought to give God praise today. You're a covenant man. You're a covenant woman. Today is the day of covenant. God, I pray right now in the name of Jesus. For a repentant heart amongst every single soul here and online. I know there's more people online than even in the building. And it's packed today on this first Sunday. I'm proud of you. But I'm saying that today is a day to crack the code. To unlock the safe. To bring the supernatural provision for the vision in your life. That will forever change. Now, now say this with me. Say, Dear Heavenly Father. In the area of tithe. I've been a sinner. I've been stealing from you. And also, my sequence was off. But today is the day that I'm going to get the sequence right to unlock that code of money, of breakthrough. Today's the Super Bowl. I don't care who wins. I've already won. I've already won. I got information that has brought me power. Now look at me just a second. Now, let's talk about offering for a minute for people that want to be investors. Um, some of you grew up like me, and you, your family didn't have a lot of money, but some people did. There's public, it's like companies go public, and they make an offer to see if you, we're going to offer this to the general public. Would you like to, to get on on this? Now, check this out. McDonald's, if you would have given them $1,000 when they asked for the offer, you would have $4.1 million today. Walmart, if you would have given Walmart when they went public and said, today, we're going to give you dividends. If you give us an offering of $1,000, today it's worth $9.6 million. How many of y'all kind of hating your parents about right now? You're like, what do they do? Night, uh, uh, check this out. If you would have invested in Walt Disney, Mickey Mouse, if, when, when Walt asked for a $1,000 offering, it would be worth $96 million today. $1,000 when Walt said, Who's going with me? I'm going to Orlando, Florida, and I have a dream. I'm going I'm gonna, I'm gonna to have people come all over the world, and they're going to be blessed, and their families are going to have a good time, and I'm going to charge them $97 for some fake ears, and I'm going to charge them $100 for a hot dog and $27 for a soda. And of course, parking will be another $19, uh, uh, but I got an idea, and he did good. He said, if you'll give me an offering today, Walt said, if you'd give me $1,000 in 1948, it would be worth $96 million. Some of you were born in 1948. Some of you were born in 19, you know, 1919. Don't you wish that your parents would have done that? But today's the day you can break the generational curse. Today is the day that you can say, God's looking for an offering. God's giving you an offering. Let me tell you what God does too. He said, you think Disney's good. I'm the one that gave Walt and Roy the idea to make a billions of dollars with a mouse. You're one idea away from a concept that'll unleash the supernatural power and breakthrough in your life. There's a guy at our church. His wife come home. Her hands are hurting so bad. I told this here once during Dominion camp meeting, which I can't wait till July. How about you? So her hands are hurting. She's young. And he's like, oh, man. She, he comes up with an idea. He makes a, he said, what, what's going on? She says, when I'm de-shedding these dogs, it hurts so bad. So he went to Home Depot and bought a metal comb from PetSmart. And then he bought a razor blades and a handle and a dremel. And he made a comb that was a de-shedding cool tool they call it the ferminator and every seven days he goes to our church they send a million dollars every seven days to his mailbox a million dollars he did it on 9 11 they shut him down because they got so much money in one time the government was scared of them but a million dollars he goes to our church there and he uh, he he has 
cars hanging on the walls, like Lamborghinis. He has so many in his garage. Some of them that are vintage, he actually had them hang on the walls. That's when you got too much money. Come on, somebody. His next door neighbor is the guy that goes to our church. His name's Isley. He wrote, it's your thing. Do what you want to do with it. His wife's on the worship team. I love that song. You know why? Because it pays the bills of the church because they're tithers. Ron Isley, here he is, up in age at 75 and 80, still selling out stadiums. But every week I see 10,000, 20,000, 30,000. I can see that he's like, it's your thing, do what you want to do with it. I can't tell you. He's up with a cane going, who does I get to? My pastor here today, and I'm like, hallelujah. Bless him, won't he do it? Come on, somebody ought to help me right now. Don't tell me God can't bless you. He has. He has unlocked the door for your financial future. It's up to you. I'm giving you the code just like I did the bishop a minute ago. I said, here it is. Are you going to unlock it? Are you going to look at it? it so some of you are tithers raise your hand again if you are a tither you can put it down so maybe your sequence was wrong let's get that right now then also if you're a tither well then why don't we just go level up and be a giver so hey you know what it's been a while since I've given a thousand dollars been a while since I've given a hundred thousand dollars my dad I'm almost done he was we, we grew up super duper poor in a travel trailer and he, was, he loved the Lord but he had no information about God or in the area of finances and so we were perishing and every night he would come in and we didn't have any money in here for three days I remember well, three days in a row we didn't eat I was about five years old and we'd sit at the table around the motor home and he said we're going to pray for this food we're about to eat and he would pray over a baloney we didn't have God thank you for this baloney God we receive it as nourishment to our body and I'd just look at him cross-eyed and he would go eat it and I'd be faking air baloney true story and I was thinking and for faking why can't we have steak tonight come on somebody ought to you know what I'm saying right but it's a poverty mentality some of you have the wrong mentality you're thinking broke and you can't think the way you used to think and get the preferred future that you want a mind stretch never goes back to its original size who am I talking to right now I'm saying if my wife can make $100,000 a month you can too you could write one song make a dog comb de shedding tool that make your pastor happy how many of y'all think we ought to do great things for the kingdom so besides the tithe it's an offering Besides the tithe, he said, you've robbed me in tithe and offering. The two separate things. The tithe belongs to the Lord. Um, man, I hate to do it, but can I use your right tennis shoe? I'll give it back. It's such a good looking shoe. Bring it to me and you come up here. What if I told him, sir, just come here. I just want to tell you that I saw you on the front row today. And I brought these tennis shoes for you and I wanted to give them to you. I want to present you don't have to get excited about it, but I mean, I want to present you with this shoe. This shoe is special to me. How many of y'all know he's not getting excited because he already owned the shoe? He's like, all you're doing is returning the shoe, Joker. How am I getting excited about you returning it? What if I went to the, what if I went to, well, the rental car place today? I rented a car here. By the way, this church treated me so good. They put tennis shoes in my room. The hotel was so nice, I could hardly get the towels in my suitcase when I left today. <laughs> nice. But today, when I go back to the rental car place, what if I said, hello, Avis, everyone, Avis, I'll let you see the manager and everyone. I just want to let you guys know, I'm returning to you a 2020 Impala with only 3,000 miles. I'm giving it as a gift from me to you. How many of y'all know they'd look at me and go, no, dingbat, you're in the rental car return line. You are returning the car. You're not giving it. What if we drove off and I decided, you know, it's a nice car, brother. How about me and you? Drive to Miami today. I ain't flying. Not when they gave me this car. Three weeks from now, I get pulled over because they say, this car has been reported stolen. You need to return it immediately. No, they gave it to me. In Ohio, I was in Columbus. The sun was shining. Super Bowl Sunday. Stayed at the hotel and got my towels. I know where I got my car. God blessed me with this car. Hallelujah. 
How many of y'all know they'd say, no, dude, you stole this car. This is a stolen vehicle. You must return it to the proper owner. I'm here to tell you that that's what tithe is. The tithe is the Lord's and we return it. And he doesn't get excited no more than he got excited because he ain't got nothing any more than what he had earlier. You are quite the model. Tell your wife to make you an extra hot pocket today. Go ahead. Return the tithe. Everybody shout, return the tithe. We're almost done. Shout, return the tithe. But then you have the ability to say, I want to make an offer to you. So like, um, Canfield, come here. This really is my watch. And this is not returning it to you. This is actually me literally giving you what is mine. I want to give you an offer, and I'm going to give you this watch. But as I give it to you, I want you to know that the word of prophecy is upon me. And the Lord says, let this watch be a sign that time is on your side. That I'm redeeming your time. I'm extending your time. And you're about to have a good time. Come on, somebody. So know today, this is symbolic of redeeming the time, extending your time, and get ready for a good time. Somebody ought to give God praise today. I dare you to praise him right now. I dare you to praise him. Come on, praise him like you mean it. Come on, Ohio. Come on around the world. Come on online. I want you to hit share on Facebook. I want you to comment back right now. It's my year. It's my year. It's my year. 2020 is my year for harvest, for breakthrough, for supernatural debt cancellation. It is my year to unlock the code for the rest of my life will be the best of my life. This is our year in Jubilee where all debts are canceled, all property returns to its original owner, and every prisoner is released. I'll prophesy that over you today. Somebody ought to get excited.